Okay, let's not waste your time. This is my full settings guide for Console Black Ops Cold War. I've covered everything I feel is important. Leave your own settings tips in the comments below if you so wish. Everything is of course subject to change with patches in the future. And I did do this on Xbox. PlayStation and Xbox tend to be identical pretty much for the settings on COD. But if anything is different on the PS5 or whatever, then sorry, not much I can do about that. But most of this will apply. I hope this helps you out. Let's get into this. This video is brought to you by the Board of Awesome from the Epic people that support the channel on Patreon. And the current goal for the channel is to hit 60,000 subscribers, currently sitting at 56k. So if you enjoy this or want to see more, hitting that subscribe button would be hugely appreciated. Thank you so much. All right, starting off on the first page, we've got input device, which is gonna be a controller, because this is a console guide, obviously, moving down, horizontal stick sensitivity, and then vertical. So horizontal is up, down, vertical is left, right. Some people like this the same, like I do for both of them. Some people like it to be quick left and right and then a bit slower up and down regardless get it how you want it to be so if you're flying past where you're trying to turn to turn it down if you're taking too long to turn to where you want to go to turn it up don't worry about this for aiming down sight right now this is just for when you're just running around looking around without aiming because below it we have specifically for ADS so again we've got low zoom here and then high zoom here so if you are, you want to turn this up, if your normal sensitivity you've got here is too slow when you're actually aiming down sight and vice versa if it's too quick. So if it's too slow, turn it up like I have, I've gone to 1.4, find what's comfortable for you. If it's going too quickly, you can turn it down to below the setting. So it's two different things for when you're not ADS and when you're ADS. What I will say is the higher you have it, the more quickly you can react and the lower you have it, generally the more precise you can be with your aim. So find the right balance. And then below it is for high zoom. So when you've got a scope on, as you can see on the right side of the screen, if you snipe all the time and you're quick with it, maybe you want to set this higher than you have it for down here. It's up to you, have a little play around. Then you've got button layout. I'm not gonna go through all of these because you can read what they do, but the default one is what a lot of people use. And then the other main one people use a lot of the time is tactical, which I use, which puts your crouching on your right stick. I slide a lot in this game. Sliding is really powerful. So if you wanna be able to slide on the right stick, that's intuitive for you, use tactical. Otherwise, go through these and see which one fits how you wanna play. Here, we've got flip the right bumper and right trigger or R1 and R2 if you're on PlayStation. Some some people prefer to aim with the left bumper slash L1 and shoot with the right bumper slash R1 rather than the triggers or R2 L2 buttons. I use the traditional uh, triggers or R2 L2, but if you want to use the bumpers or R1 L1, then do that instead. That will be using flipped as it shows you on the graphic on the right hand side. Some people say that's easier, not for me, but it's whatever works for you. Then we've got invert, I've got disabled. This is the vertical look. So with it disabled, it's if you press up, you look up. If you pull down, you look down. If you have it inverted, looking up will push you down like you're uh, driving a plane or something, for example, with a gear stick and then vice versa, pulling down will make you look up. Below this, we've got controller vibration. I recommend if you can play without it, so with it disabled, then do so because it's not gonna mess with your aim. All you need to focus on is actually aiming at the target, no rumbles throwing you off. But if you're like me, even though you know disabled is better, but you can't, then stick with enabled. I just can't get used to playing disabled. I've played these games for years. I like to know when I'm being hit by someone rather than just looking at the screen, like feeling the impact. And I also like to feel how the weapon is kind of recoiling or vibrating. Below this, we've got gameplay. So slow down and strafing, and strafing rather aim assist. This is all the aim assist setting we have in the game at this point. So uh, having it disabled, if you want to play without it and it's all down to you, then do so. Uh, but almost everyone's going to have it enabled because aim assist is strong. And if you want it to be a level playing field with everyone else that's using it, then you're going to want it on below. Airborne mantle behavior. When you are in the air, if you press the jump button, you will mantle over the object if you're on manual. If you're on automatic, your guy or girl, whatever, will automatically grab onto that thing if you're near it and mantle over it. I play with it on manual, then below, if you're on manual, uh, your grounded mantle behavior is separate. For me here, if I press jump once, my character will then grapple onto the thing that they're near and go over it. 
If you don't want that, if you want to avoid the possibility that you might try and jump shot, for example, and then accidentally mantle on something, then have it on second press. What this will do is, if you go for a jump shot, and you're near an object that you can mantle, your character won't mantle it unless you press A for a second time, so it won't screw you up doing that jump shot in that fight. The reason I have it on press is because I was on second press, and I didn't find any situations where I jump shotted and accidentally mantled something, so I now have it just on press for ease of use. It's up to you what you prefer. Down. Aim down sight behavior. Almost everyone will have it on hold. This is where you hold the trigger or L2 or whatever to aim down sight and let go to make it go away. If you have it on toggle, you'll press it, you'll go into it, you'll press it again, you'll come out of it. Only for people that specifically want that for some reason, almost everyone's learnt with it on hold. Below, uh, this one is interesting though. I think the default was hold for steadying your aim when you've got a sniper or something. So when you're aiming in and you press in the stick to steady your aim to hold your breath, usually it's on hold, so you'll be holding it until you want it to go off. But for me, that can kind of throw off how precise I can be because it's not part of my muscle memory usually. So I have a toggle where I'll press it in, my guy will hold his breath, I can then aim, take the shot if I want, press it again to come out of it. Whatever's better for you, do that. Attack vehicle control mode. So, if you have it on aim based, basically the vehicle or kill streak will go when moving forwards where you aim. If you have it on alternate, you can have them work independently. So you can aim where you want and move where you want without them being tied to each other. I have an aim base because I'm just used to it. Now we've got the stick layout. Uh, not much to explain to do here. You can see what it does on the right hand screen if you change it. Almost everyone's going to want default. But if that doesn't work for you for some reason, see if either of those are what you're looking for. It flips them around, makes the right one do the left and all sorts of stuff like that. Default for most people. Uh, right, left stick, minimum input threshold, and right stick, and then there's maximum and minimum. I'll go through what these are. So for the left stick ones here, the minimum input threshold is how little an amount you have to move the stick to make it move. The lower it is, the lower your dead zone. So if you have it on one, for example, or zero rather, the tiniest movement will make your stick move. It will move straight away. I don't have it on that because controllers sometimes drift or you accidentally knock things or whatever. So if you're, if you're moving around, you're drifting around without you really pressing anything, move this up to whatever point where it stops doing so. For me, I found it perfect at about six, okay? And the same goes for the right stick with your aiming. Then you've got the maximum input threshold. I am on 100. Now, having it on 100 means that if I push all the way to the right on my right stick, so here, so let's say, uh, my turn will hit 100% the speed of it. If you bring this down, let's say to 70%, if I was to move my right stick across 70% of the way, that's where it'd hit its maximum turn speed, if that makes sense. So the lower you have this, the more quickly your stick will hit the maximum speed, the faster you will turn, the more twitchy it will be. I don't have it like that. I prefer to have as much as I move the stick be how much my guy turns or moves, whatever, based upon the left and right sticks. So it's up to you what you like. If you like a faster acceleration, I guess you'd call it, you want it lower. If you want it mapped to exactly how your sticks are, you want it up around 100 or whatever. I hope that makes sense. Down. Auto move forwards. This is where if you have it disabled, it works exactly as most of you are used to, you don't have to worry about it. But if you want your character to automatically move forwards for some reason without you having to press things constantly, you can enable it. And if you press the stick forwards twice, your character will continuously walk forwards until you alter it somehow. Like pulling the stick backwards. I have it on disabled because I can't see why you'd want it enabled. Auto sprint. I have this disabled, but if you want it enabled, this is where if you push the stick forwards all the way, your character will start to sprint. So rather than pressing anything in, it's all based on how much you move the stick. Again, disabled for me and most of you out there. Sprint behavior. On go to is where you press to sprint. You know, you press the stick in one time and then pressing again won't do anything. You then release moving forwards to stop it. It's what most of you want. If you don't want that, you have it on hold where you hold it in all the time to sprint. I find this really counterintuitive intuitive most of the time. It affects my running and how much I'm having to concentrate on. I accidentally stop sprinting. It's just another thing to do. But if you're used to that, you want it on hold. If you just want it on the default, you want it on go to. Now we come to sprint cancels reload. I have this enabled because I'm super used to it. So if I'm reloading at a time and someone pops out on me, I like to try to sprint forwards a tiny bit to cancel the reload and start shooting the enemy or try and move away, whatever it may be. It's just what I'm used to from all the shooters I've played. But there are 
are benefits to having it disabled here, where if you want to be able to run around while reloading, which is definitely an asset, then great. I just can't get used to it. I prefer to have it enabled. Pick which one is better for you. Try them both out. See which one you like. Now, moving down to equipment behavior. This is very simple. Um, the normal way of doing it is you hold it and let go to use it. Toggling it will mean you pull out the piece of equipment and you press it again to use it. But I, I just prefer to hold it and let go when I want to use it. Now, we're going to move across to the graphics settings up top. So here we go. The safe area bounds are very simple. It's just what you set when you first turn the game on. Just have it to the very edge of the screen so you can see all of it. Uh, if it doesn't fit, if it goes beyond, I can't show you because it doesn't for mine. But if it goes beyond the bounds of your screen, that's bad. You want to be able to see the lines as I've got them here. Okay, coming back out to that. Colorblind, if you're not colorblind, you don't need to do anything. You can then pick one of these based upon which colorblindness you have, or if you just prefer the colors or how it's laid out using these. Field of view, this is super, super important. So if you look at that image on the right hand side there, it shows you what you have if you've got it at 60, 80, 100, and 120. Basically, the lower you have it, the less you see on your screen. The more kind of zoomed in it is, the higher you have it, the more peripheral vision you have. So I massively, massively recommend having it as high as is comfortable for you. You don't want to have people at your flank and you can't see them, but they can see you because they have a wider field of view. The more of the screen you have, the more you can take in, the more chance you've got of seeing an enemy or whatever. But beware that the higher you have it, the more your frame rate or overall performance of the game may be affected. So for me, the perfect point was 100. I haven't noticed any frame rate loss with 100. I get to see a load of the screen, but not too much for me to take in. Just find what's your nice sweet spot. If you've got it so high up that you can't see what's happening in front of you somewhere because it's too zoomed out, let's say, then move it down to a comfortable point below your brightness. You want the darks not be too darks and the brights not be too bright. Doesn't take much explaining, but don't allow people to hide in dark corners. And then another really important one, I highly recommend you turn off motion blur, okay? So you can have it on either of these self only. I actually don't know what that means. If someone wants to tell me in the comments below, uh, it might just be seeing your, your hand move around might be blurred. Regardless, disabled means that it's less cinematic or potentially aesthetically pleasing, but having it disabled means that everything looks as it is, no matter what, there's no blur. So if you turn quickly, you'll see all the screen nice and precise as it's supposed to be, and you can pick out enemies and whatever's happening in front of you without blur, okay? Moving across to audio now. I'm not gonna go through all of these here because these are just personal preference, most of them, and you can read what they do, but I will highlight two things. Uh, number, well, three things, I guess. Two of them are combined. So the first two, I have the music off and I have my sound effects up at 100 because I'm not interested in personally having the music. I just wanna hear the game and the footsteps around me, all that kind of thing. Plus, when I make a video, I don't want the in-game music mixing with my music that I use. But the main thing I wanna hear is footsteps, reloads, enemy callouts, all that kind of stuff. So I choose to take away the distraction of the music. And the other thing I wanna highlight is the audio presets. I keep saying it, pick what works for you, but I choose high boost because I find that personally, this is the one that allows me to hear footsteps most easily. And that is incredibly important in a game like Call of Duty because you can hear people moving around you and get the jump on them. All right, now we're gonna move across to interface because all of this down here is just stuff to do with your voice and things. You can work out what's best for you interface. Subtitles, do you want them on or off? Down, crosshairs, I have them shown. If you want to play with no HUD just for a uh, immersive experience, then cool, that would be using hidden, but I choose to have them shown because you want them on if you want to play well. Moving down, yes, you want to see your hit markers, very simple. Damage-based hit markers makes the hit marker look different based upon what kind of damage you're doing. I think that's very important as well. I have the ally health bars hidden because uh, you don't have to do this. It's probably not going to do very much, but I prefer the idea that if I happen to see a health bar, I know to shoot that enemy straight away. Just no distractions. Then we got the enemy health bar show. Obviously, you want that on for the reason I just said. Player names, I have them on full. Just do, do what you want. Do, do whatever you want there. Uh, horizontal compass, I have that on because it allows me to call out a direction if I feel like it to a teammate. Honestly, I don't use it very much because it's, uh, it's a bit difficult to look at that while you play and call it out. But if you want it on, then great. If you don't, very easy. Hide it. Moving down now. In-game alert icons come up on your screen for when you've got issues with your network or connection to the lobby. Uh, I have them on so that I know this. If you don't want the distraction, you have them disabled. Mouse tool tips, I'm just talking about controller today. So let's now move across. We can skip keyboard and mouse and move straight across to accounts and network. I don't need to go through most of this. The one thing I'm going to say is here, if you only want to play with people on your platform, then have this. 
disabled. So if you're on Xbox, you'll play against Xbox. If you're on PC, you'll play against PC. Just be aware that this might mean you have longer waiting times and potentially a worse connection because Call of Duty has less people to choose from based upon connections put into your lobby. If you want to play with anyone and everyone, so PC, Xbox, PlayStation, your friends and other platforms, that kind of stuff, then have this enabled. Uh, nothing down here is of interest to me other than, okay, well actually, if you want profanity or swearing off for you or your kids, whatever, then disabled. I have enabled because I'm a big old boy. But essentially, that is my settings guide. I've gone through everything I can think of, made it as detailed as I can without going to the stuff that I think is definitely not of importance. I hope it helps some of you out. Leave your own tips in the comments below if you want or anything you found useful, helpful. Let me know what you thought of this guide. Say thank you if it was great. That'd be really appreciated because these are very long for me to make. Good luck out there in Call of Duty Cold War. Like, subscribe if you want to see more. All the links to my social media, all that can be found in the description. I love you all. I'm Get Good Guy, and I'll see you next time. Latest. Reverse boosting. The premise of intentionally doing badly, really badly, to lower your skill bracket, to the detriment of your team in the moment as well, manipulating the system, and then forcing the game to give you much lesser players. I have not and never will do this. But it's a clear problem that it's even a thing. 